playing with legends today tony miles this is uh, gm talks but, uh, as in in my career i have played against a lot of uh, well, the known figures in the chess world, the players like uh, Carlsen and uh, Short and Larsen and Porches and Tim and, and all these guys. And I'm going to tell a little bit about it also because um, it might maybe be interesting for you to, to get my uh, impression of, uh, of how, um, how it is to play this. This game uh, I, I'm playing against uh, Tony Miles was in 1994 in uh, Sevilla in Spain. Uh, I was a young, aspiring I am. I wanted to become a GM, uh, and uh, I went there all of, alone. and And it was a funny tournament because uh, it was sponsored by Onse, who was, uh, was uh, I think the blind society in Spain. Uh, that meant that whenever you didn't win, you get to play a blind player. So I played. I think I played against the four blind players in the tournament, um, and I only lost two miles. Uh, but it was a very uh, instructive game in some way. I was. Uh, I learned a lot from this game. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Miles uh, as, as we go through the game. Uh, Miles, he sadly died rather young at 46. He had diabetes and he didn't look like he had a very healthy lifestyle. Uh, he was kind of a funny guy. He, was, uh, he had a, a great sense of humor, uh, very English, uh, a little bit sarcastic, a little, a little nasty sometimes, actually. Um, and and, and I'm gonna t- he had some, some funny remarks to me after the game anyway. I'm going to kind of tell a little bit about that. Uh, but but I also I, I thought it was kind of funny because he, when he was playing tournaments, uh, he was always walking around in the women's section uh, looking at, at the young girls trying to strike up conversations with them. And and when he saw and he did that and I think he was probably right quite successful in this field, but uh, but he was also making fun of people all the time. I don't, I don't think he could help himself. He he's also very well known for this uh, <laughs> this uh, book review where he he wrote just wrote two words, uh, other crap. <laughs> so this is um, um, anyway. Uh, he was a very colorful figure. He was a, he was actually a great fighter. He was very good at sort of uh, grinding down people, uh, the lesser players. Uh, I think his top level was point, position number nine in the world. So he was a serious player. And of course, he's most well known for beating Karpov with uh, uh, the Saint George E4 A6. Anyway, we're going on to the game here. Uh, I was, uh, oops, this was uh, not the right moment. We came in here. We'll start from the beginning. Uh, he had white, uh, d4. He was not a theoretician. He just wanted to take people to uh, to uncharted territory. Uh, and I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I think I played the King's Indian at that time. And here he plays c3. Uh, not allowing any, uh, <laughs> any, any, uh, uh, unpleasant activity. He probably read me quite right uh, how to play against me uh, at that, yeah, especially at that time, because I, I thought I was Kasparov, so I tried to play like Kasparov. Um, and this is, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's the Torah uh, against g6, and with the with the very um, very solid c3, not not allowing anything with c5. Um, and and I w- nowadays I would play d6 here. I think it's probably the best move. d5 is of course possible. It looks like it should be okay, uh, but 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 maybe it's not so easy to play this position for black. Uh, but I, I I think I've read this that this was supposed to be be fine. And here you bishop d3 is uh, is is the main line, but bishop e2 was. Was more like Miles's approach, uh, especially to this game. He, he didn't play very ambitiously with White. He just tried to get a slight advantage and and trick people. Was his uh, approach? Rook e8. Uh, this is uh, this is the idea that uh, this is how Black usually plays this. Um, and e5. And and I saw, I was, was kind of happy here. I thought, okay, Black must be fine. There's no problems. Uh, and I was, uh, I thought, oh, he will take, 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 and I will have a nice position. And then he played uh, knight b3. I was like, hmm, what is that? What does that do? What, what is the idea behind this? Uh, what is he doing? Um, and that was uh, kind of, kind of unsettling for me because I already I didn't know what's going on, and he ex- knew exactly what was going on. Uh, he probably played many games. This was before there was many databases and stuff, so 
so you didn't know what to expect. Um, and here he came with another, okay, this is more normal move. Uh, the idea is to go um, c4. And what he's basically trying to do is get a sort of a French with the bishop, this bishop, outside the pawn chain. Uh, with, so with all the, the, the good things from the French, without all the bad things from the French. Uh, that sometimes this bishop gets stuck down here. Um, you can also say it's more like a, maybe an advanced variation of the caro can. Anyway, h6, all this. And here I, I made a mistake. Um, I didn't know it was a mistake at the time. I thought I, could, I couldn't believe why it's set up. It looks so... I was used to playing sort of uh, very... Uh, trying to be, be uh, sort of consequent... Um, principled and 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 here he comes with knight b3 and c3 and what's going on um, but it was very cunning from him i think it was probably very smart so i played e4 here and here i played b5 and i thought and this this is this looks all very good and i said oh uh, and after the game i say you gave me all this space and he said yeah with a smile a little grin or something yeah so i can creep around it and this is exactly what happens because um, this looks like black is is having more space it looks like uh, he's controlling all the way up to the, to to here right Controlling actually everything more or less uh, here. So, so and, and we are fighting around the, the, the other one here. But to be honest, uh, the, the whole black setup is, is, is not strong. And I learned a lot from this game because space advantage only makes sense if you can attack something and if the lack of space is a problem for uh, the opponent. And here's not a problem. He has plenty of room for his pieces, actually. Uh, they, they, and you will see that uh, in the game. So what did he do here? He played rook a1. And the idea is, of course, very simple, a4. And um, and he doesn't need anything. He's good pieces. Uh, they will come in. Uh, he, will get, he will get this played at some point in the future after, uh, after this. Uh, and the knight will, will go somewhere. Maybe sometimes he can also attack with with this move and attack this guy. So, um, so this is, is actually already a clear advantage for white, even though it looks like black has healthy position, more space and uh, good pieces. But one thing to notice, of course, is, is uh, uh, our, our friend, uh, the bishop down here, he uh, is not doing anything. He, she is uh, actually at the moment just out of the game. Okay, knight b6, preventing a4. Knight c5, uh, renewing the threat of a4. Uh, okay, and I kicked the bishop. I got, got tired of the... the um, and that was probably not, not good either, because the bishop is very good on this diagonal. Look at it. Look at that guy here. Look at him. Just slicing through the board. Uh, and knight fd7. Uh, I have a, a distant hope of playing and going after uh, bishop here, but it's I won't have time. He's coming very fast suddenly. Knight d b3. Other knight is coming, and you can see that he doesn't have any problems with the space, lack of space here, uh, attacking here. And he just covered it. He, he has in it plenty of time. There's no problem here for, for white. He's threatening just to take a knight c5 and b3, c4. So I move the knight, but then comes a4. And, uh, and now this diagonal will, this, this file will be open. Um, I play f5, going on with the plan. Take here, take here. And, um, and here comes a very strong move, knight a5. There's no smart uh, move with, with the knight, and, and he's undermining everything, and it's suddenly it starts to fall apart. apart. Played rook f8, he took here, and here I should probably take with the b pawn, but after f3, I'm just clearly worse. Uh, clearly, clearly worse. And, and this uh, black has not gotten his attack started. White's uh, activity is, is very strong. He only has good pieces. Uh, he doesn't have any weaknesses. This is a, sort of a model game for white. 
Uh, I took with the d-pawn to get uh, this square, um, but but it's it's it doesn't do anything there, so it was not the correct move. Um, after f3, by the way, uh, Tony Miles was the first English grandmaster. Since, since that, they they came. Uh, that came a lot, but he had a big rivalry with uh, Raymond Keane and uh, and these uh, two to become the, the first, uh, and they didn't like each other. In general, there has been a lot of uh, rivalry in in, in the English chess, uh, especially beforehand. I think it's getting a little bit better, uh, but but <laughs> they kind kind of like to to <laughs> talk bad to each other. Anyway, f4. This. Uh, it looks very desperate, and it is. Uh, he just went back, and and I can't hold the center. These uh, it's it's all collapsing, and and you can see that that this is a very strong central setup. While this can be easily undermined, and uh, and over here, so black is is simply overextended, and uh, as a great display of how to. Uh, to, to sort of punish uh, premature uh, aggression, uh, getting forward too fast. And here, here we actually had a very very strong move. Not so easy to see, but uh, he didn't see, he didn't see it. Uh, but he could play this move. Uh, with I was I think I was a little bit afraid of, of of that move, just leaving the pawn here. But the thing is, he, you can't allow the bishop out here, so you will have to accept a very strong center, and it's just losing, basically. He took back, and I thought, okay, I will, uh, I'll get, and now I get, at least I get the bishop pair. This can't be bad. So, and here to, uh, there's, there's of course trouble down here. Oops, yeah, uh, and there's also uh, this one on the white squares, which is a bit unpleasant with this bishop looming around. I notice that uh, this rook is playing a role, and this rook is playing a role. And, uh, and and at the moment this bishop is not playing a role, but this knight is is dominant. It's just taking away so many squares from from black. Um, I played a4, and here comes another very strong move. And and Miles was a very strong player. And uh, at the time I had something like 24-15, and he had 25-90, and he just showed that he would. He, I was just simply totally outclassed in this game. Um, I was a bit annoyed because I had, had I think I had maximum points up till this point, but but to be honest, I never was even close to getting points in this game. Uh, H4, and we see that um, it's starting to collapse over here, and I I totally panicked. I couldn't find a move to be honest. Uh, there's there's <laughs> these the bishops up. Both of these bishops are very strong. Both of my bishops are ridiculous. His rooks are good. My rooks are bad. His knight is good. My knight is the only piece I have, and he, but he can take it any time uh, he wants. So, so I, I panicked. I took here and was so hoping for something like um, like this, uh, and and I would get get some. It's it doesn't work actually, but but this was uh, was was a good chance and with. Of course, the computer nowadays sees easily that it doesn't work, but 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 back then it was not so easy. But he just took with the pawn, and uh, I gave up the exchange, and and of course I, I managed to get my pieces out, and and the, the knight remained on d5. Um, and if he was a worse player than he was, uh, then this was would maybe have given some chances, but I don't think so. Queen f6, um, trying to to get this. Getting some some thing going on the white squares. I need to cover it and uh, hoping that this file will be to my advantage. And at least I got a pawn. Knight comes back, queen f5, and queen h2. And this is, is starting to feel a little bit unpleasant. Um, this bishop is it can't move, which is is very odd. I would like to play knight f4, but he just he just takes it and takes it and take with the king and go back. So, so this is is a problem that it's 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 making this uh, 
queen not able to move. Played rook a6. Always feels nice to, to do some some maneuver like uh, this. It's always been one of my favorite uh, themes in chess. The rook lift. But he's first. First in. And, not, and he's not threatening anything, but I couldn't find a move. And I play here. And here, and here he found a winning combination. And, uh, and of course, uh, they can calculate uh, these, these players at this level. So take your time and see if you can, you can find this. Play this move. Boom. And after this move, forced move, check, and here, and here. And uh, there's no checks. There is a check here, but then he just checks back. So this is not, not a problem. I took here, and, and here I gave up. After king g8, uh, and before he played rook d1, I gave up. Um, I'm just lost. Uh, so this was a well-deserved uh, defeat uh, to a great legend who sadly passed away way too early. Uh, they they didn't live so long back then. They, I don't think I think they, they had a less healthy lifestyle than we we probably do now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching. This has been Suneberg Hansen from GM Talks.